In this video, we are asked to graph a position time graph, a velocity time graph, and an acceleration time graph for a rolling ball going on this path. Okay, so let's take a look and see what the story of this ball is. This ball is going to start going from here to here at a constant um, velocity. Then it's just going to roll up this part. So the second part is just going to slow down because it's, you know, slanted up and it's going against the gravity. Then it's going to start going at a lower speed probably here. And it's going to, you know, decrease its velocity until it stops. Now, how can we do, uh, draw these three parts on this graph? So for the first part, I'm going to have a constant velocity, um, and that means that my position is changing with time at a constant rate. Um, since my position is going, so if, if this is my zero position, my position is increasing at a constant rate. So meaning I will have a straight line with a positive slope. Now for the second part, because my ball is rolling up the hill, my velocity is going to be actually smaller. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to increase my position at a slower rate. So it's going to be slowing down. Now what kind of curve is going to represent a slowing down motion? Um, a curve that is something like that. If you watch my previous video, I have made it very clear that if I have a curve like this, my velocity, which is my slope of my instantaneous velocities at these two points, looks like it's increasing because this one has a bigger slope than this one, meaning that the second one is has a lower slope and a lower velocity. So that means that my um, velocity is decreasing. So since I'm slowing down, then I'm going to have a curve like this. Now for the third part, I'm going to have my ball continuing at a constant velocity. So whatever the velocity that we're going to end up here, it's going to keep that and move forward because there's no friction. It's not going to slow down. The question mentions that there is no friction um, involved. Okay, so since I'm going to have a velocity here, my velocity here is going to be smaller than what it was here because I just went up the hill. So I'm going to have a smaller velocity, but it would still be constant. So it's just going to be something like that. If I were to graph this better. So for this part, I, there will be a straight line. For this part, it would be a curved line. And this part, it would still be a straight line, but with a smaller slope. Now let's graph the velocity time graph. The velocity time graph would just be the slope of the previous graph. So the first part here, the slope of it is a positive number. So I'm just going to have a positive slope here. The second part, it's, it looks like that it has a negative slope. We talked about how the slope is decreasing here. So I will have a negative slope, which is going to look like that. Does it ever get to zero? No, because at this point, I actually have a velocity. It's not a horizontal. It's not going to be a horizontal tangent. So it's going to be, there's going to be a value here. Um, therefore, it's just going to go negative, but not going to reach zero. Then for the last part, um, I have a smaller velocity, but it's still constant. So this is how I'm going to represent it. Good. Now let's take a look at the acceleration time graph. Acceleration time graph is just going to be the slope of a velocity time graph. So this part has a zero slope because it's a horizontal line. So I'm going to have a zero acceleration. Over here, I have a negative slope, so therefore I'm going to have a negative acceleration. And this part, I'm still going to have a horizontal line with a zero slope, which is going to be a zero acceleration. There you go.